welcome everybody to another round of World of Tanks subscriber replays. My name, as always, is Maxwell, and today's first video is from the user Bladed Baron. That's Bladed Baron, and he's driving the T29 on a standard Battle on Live Orcs. XVM doesn't like their chances on this one, but we'll see how things go. Obviously, the subscriber replays I bring you aren't always a guaranteed victory. You do get a defeat every now and then, so we'll see how this one goes. So straight off, Bladed Baron going to be heading to the northern area, being a heavy tank, that's where he should go, into the town. Being a T29 though, some of them like to hang back and use this little bit cover here to get hull down, or other little bits up ahead here. Uh, problem with that is you get a very thin line of fire towards the enemy's advancing position, as you can see IS-2 just about dropping out of view round about there, Blader Baron just firing a shot off because he knows his cannon's going to reload well in time before any more enemies are spotted. But yeah, a lot of people do like to try and go hull down with a T-29 there, not realising that they can't really hit anything from that position, uh, so really it is just a waste. You can see the enemy team sending a few heavy tanks into the town here. Only really see this IS-2 and that T-1 heavy in the distance there. They're going to have to commit considerably more forces to this town if they want to win out this fight. Although, to be honest, they've got an E-25 and a couple of other tank destroyers there. So they're probably going to be aligned on that ridge on the D and E line. And there we go. As you can see, considerably more heavy tanks in the area. That IS-2... We can see he's kind of focusing his gun in this direction, so Blade of Baron going to set himself up in a side scraping position. Good thing about that is the uh, armour of a T29 is pretty thin, so if you can get into a good angle for side scraping, you can really lure people into firing at your side armour uh, and pretty much just guarantee that they're going to bounce you. One of the... Uh advantages but not really advantages of the T29 there, the thin armour luring people into having bad shots at you. Takes a hit from that T29, no it wasn't, it was from the IS-2, who was probably further down the road there. A little bit unfortunate that it took off his track and did damage to him, so probably just going to drop back a little bit. Wait for that IS-2 to fire. We see the smoke there, so he's had a shot. He tries to drop back and get out of view, but not able to get back in time and able to land another uh, good solid hit there. First one on the IS-2. You can see there is an enemy T-29 coming around in that northern area there, so got to be aware of that. Gets a good shot through his drive wheel and does some damage to the hull of the T-29. Just going to wait for this guy to poke himself back out. Hasn't got that upgraded turret, so probably hasn't got the upgraded gun either. Probably still got the stock gun, so got to be careful of the reload. If he has got that uh, n not fully upgraded gun, then he will have a very decent reload speed. And uh, half decent, well, enough penetration to get through the hull armour of the T-29. And uh, got to be careful of that reload speed. So it looks like the Allied team is actually not faring too well in the town here. But is able to come around the side of that IS-2 and almost taken by surprise. IS-2 does realise what's going on. Has a shot himself but just bounces. And hopefully the Allied team can hold them off here. Has a, a quick blind shot at the hill there. Just before he drives forwards. IS-2 going to be coming around the sides here. Still hasn't fired yet, so got to be careful. Not really wanting to take any damage that he can avoid from this IS-2. And they've still got a couple of other heavy tanks here. You can see the ARL, but the... Well, the ARL can be dangerous in certain circumstances. As you see there, the ARL gets a good bit of damage. Bladed Baron just decides to say, fuck it. And uh, charges down the IS-2, takes a hit for his trouble, but he had the hit points to be able to soak it up, and it was more important to get the IS-2 out of the battle, as that was their top-tiered heavy tank. Once he's gone, it's going to be a lot easier to win this battle in the city. Pokes himself out to try and get a shot on this uh, Panzer IV here, who is out in the open and gets himself taken out quickly. Also took out that Wolverine earlier, didn't mention it, just because it was a one-shot, one-kill, nice and textbook. So there's still this M5A1 Stew and the ARL-44 somewhere. 
And the game's fairly even at the moment at 10 kills to 8. It looks like the Allied team is pushing in very, very strongly from the rear there. Uh, Going to be coming around the base. One good shot on the rear of the ARL takes him out and that is kill number 6 and 3 and a bit 1000 points of damage. This M5A1 is probably going to be long gone by now. Probably saw the way that the battle in the city was going and just decided to run the heck away which is what any sane person should have done at this point especially considering the score is currently 11 kills to 8. So allied team winning this one out. Just got to be careful though because that E25 is still in the town there. Uh, still in that little area of houses. Not sure where he is at this point. To be honest though, he's probably fallen back. He's probably taken the four line around the swamp there uh, to head back towards the base and defend. As you can see there, actually kills the KV-1 so he's almost certainly at the base now uh, defending rather than still in the buildings there. So we're going to speed this one up until we get back into the action play. The Baron just going to make his way to the base and try and assist with the attackers coming in there. You can see they've got that SU-100, the uh, T-150, and who else is that? That is the... Well, it doesn't matter because he's dead now. The M7 it would have been. Takes out the M5, who just left himself a little bit in the open there. And that leaves himself this Hellcat and that Panzer Souffle 5, although it looks like the Souffle is actually AFK. Well, not AFK, he's kind of moving around like a bit of a retard, to be honest. So, possibly a bot. And they've got this Panzer 4S to deal with. Gets a good hit on the Panzer 4S. Panzer 4S rushed his shot there and just missed the T29. He's going to get himself into a fantastic hold-down position here uh, with the excellent gun depression and the fantastic turret armor of the T-29. He's just going to be able to win any battle from here. You can see just sig signaling on the map there that he wants help from the Panzer Souffle, but he's not going to get any help because I'm pretty sure that guy is just a bot as he's continually trying to drive into the swamp. Not quite got a shot on the Panzer 4S there. Luckily, it looks like the Souffle has, so even though he's a bot, still doing work. Able to take him out. And that just leaves this E25 against the Hellcat and the T29. Looks like the Hellcat's been spotted and instead of tr continuing to drive or trying to get into cover, stops dead in the open. One good shot. No, that one just about misses the E25. Got to wait for his cannon to reload here. But it looks like the E25 is going to get into cover without getting killed here. So, a little bit unfortunate to miss that shot there. Thought the E25 would have been leaving, but, uh... So, his shot just went... I don't know if it went low or if it went high and wide, but whatever it was, it missed somehow, even though it looked like it shouldn't have. So, now that E25 has probably got the most advantageous position at the moment. He's only one shot from death, but he has got that ridiculously fast reload, and is able to relocate nice and quickly. Unfortunately for him, that Panzer Souffle, while he is probably a bot or an idiot, he is still in the centre there, spotting out anybody who moves around the swamp. So Blade of Baron just going to do the smart thing here, of just reverse himself back into the cap circle. And that's just going to force the E25 to show his hand and at least make a move and have to come for the cap circle if he wants to win this game so he's going to have to attack at some point just going to wait until that point comes not really sure where the attack's coming from play the baron thinking it's going to come from the swamp area which is exactly what i would have thought as well but as it is the e25 somehow snuck into the pit over there has a shot misses Luckily for him, the E25 was already making his way down into the pit, so he couldn't have had any more shots on him. Probably could have landed at least two more hits there, the E25, before taking cover. But as it was, he just had his one shot and then ran off. Blade of Baron going to back off as far as he can from the pit just to make the E25 shot even harder. Uh, the E25 is probably going to come up at some strange angle, so just got to keep as much of the pit covered as he can. And there he is, he's over on the right hand side, E25, oh he's very hull down, has his shot but he's just about able to get a hit on the top of his 
tank just as the base capture finishes as well so absolutely awesome bit of play there from bladed baron in his t29 picking up almost 4,000 points of damage eight kills and pretty much completing that base capture there so awesome replay from you thank you very much for sending that one in stick around because as always the score screens and another game are coming right up And our second replay of the day is from the user B-Duck. That's B-Duck, and he's driving the M103 on a standard battle on the Sand River. M103 being a tier 9 heavy tank for the Americans. So this thing is a pretty good tank. It's got decent turret armor, although to be honest with the size of the turret, it can be a bit of a weak spot. Like the um, sides here aren't fantastically sloped. So if you get caught in the side or the cheek of the turret there, you can be a little unlucky with the penetrations. And also that huge commander's hatch at the top there can be a bit of a dramatic weak spot if you're not very, very careful. So enemy already pushing up pretty damn far with that uh, AMX 1390. Unfortunately for him, he gets spotted out early. A couple of guys have a shot at him, but... Uh, Nobody on this side at least lands any hits. 1390 Sting still for some reason. Uh, I find that a little bit very nice take out there by B-Duck. I just find it a bit hard to believe that a 57% win rate player would get caught out in the open like that and then just sit there and die. Uh, yeah, a little bit unusual there. Maybe thought this was an encounter battle or something. Didn't think that it was a, a regular standard old battle. So, a little bit unfortunate for the AMX 1390 player there. Uh, good luck for B-Duck in the M103, picking up an early kill and a good way to start off this match. So, as it is, he's going to be heading to the usual place that heavy tanks go to, which is... <coughs> In the shadow of the mountains on the right hand side there, using this sand dune as cover, going to pick off who he can. Doesn't quite have the gun depression just yet, there we go, he's able to find the rear of an IS-8. Not really sure what that IS-8's doing. Looks like he made an early decision to push up here, to where he should. Unfortunately for him, it looks like none of his allies came with him. So he decided to do the only thing he could, which was just turn tail and run for the hills. Get behind those sand dunes, just fall back and wait for some allied tanks to come and offer some support. And if they don't come and offer some support, then fall back to them. Took a shot there just at the same time as that 12T, so not quite able to get any damage on that T20 there. May be able to get a good hit on this T32 here. Indeed he does, gets a good shot onto him. Uh, he's taking considerable fire from a few different places here now. Uh, can he get one more shot? Oh, very nice. Gets an ammo rack on the T-32 for about 800 and some damage there. But he's taken a considerable amount of damage for his trouble here. Just getting pounded and pounded. Looks like it is an AT-7 that's doing the majority of the damage there. Ooh, very unlucky to get the commander's hatch hit there and the optics destroyed. But he is able to get back behind the sand dune after picking up that amazing ammo rack on the T-32 there. As you can see, only fired two shots at him, but did 1,285 damage. So that's the north kind of dealt with now. So B-Duck going to be heading more to the south of the map. As you can see, the enemy pushing through with a sizable force there. They've got a few heavy tanks, and the, their T9 heavy tank, the E75, is in that location as well. Spots out the attackers who were shooting at him earlier, so going to get some revenge here. Not quite able to get any damage on that e AT7. Those things can be pretty troll from a distance when you're unable to pick out the weak spots. And B-Duck obviously knows that, so he's just leaving those guys to their fate. They've got some light tanks and a couple of other heavy tanks moving in on the base now, and they should be able to mop up those defenders. Fingers crossed anyway. So now he's going to lend a hand in the south here. 
Excuse me, for some reason my throat is playing havoc at the moment. Wasn't quite able to land a shot on that T30-1, but somebody is. Looks like he's got the sides stroke rear of the Z75 and gets a good hit on him. He's just going to have to fall back behind that sand dune now and uh, stick with his less advantageous position. Not quite able to hit the Indian Panzer there. A little bit of a rushed shot as he was backing off behind the sand dune. But to be honest, I probably would have taken that shot as well, but also in the full knowledge that it was never going to hit. So now just going to wait these guys out until they either push forward and make a move. There we go, finds the IS-6 here, is that? It is indeed in and amongst the buildings. He gets taken out by the Object 704. And now it's just a case of B-Duck waiting for this E-75 to try and push down on that Knaven. And if he does, as soon as he exposes himself to the side here, he's going to be able to unleash hell at his side armour. But it looks like the E-75 is a little bit smarter than that. Not going to poke himself straight out. b has been spotted from somebody. Not really sure who. There we go. E75 comes over the ridge for some reason and gets himself immediately evaporated there. So not really sure what the E75 was thinking there. Probably would have been safer for him to just try and push straight down on the Knaven or really just fall back as he didn't really have the support of his team there. Uh, a little bit of a mistake from him. And as you see, he just gets himself instantly evaporated. IS-3 shows himself. Really, he should have been pushing with the E-75. But it looks like that IS-3 is stock. As he only has 1,450 hit points. Well, at least it means he doesn't have the upgraded turret and the fully upgraded gun. But uh, he's well hidden behind that sand dune there. So there's not really anything B-Duck can do from this angle. And he knows it. So he's moving forward. So he may be able to finally get something on this IS-3 as he retreats. Uh, only got a few hit points left, just 39 hit points there. But even with that few hit points, the uh, IS-3 can be pretty troll. As you see there, just bounced that shot, I think. I think he hit, I don't think he missed. But he's just setting himself up in a bit of a side scraping position and also hull down. Takes another shot and just terraforms the sand in front of him a little bit. There's a little bit of landscaping. Doesn't quite hit the IS-3, but it looks like the Knaven was able to take him out regardless. So having a good game so far, done himself nearly 3,500 points of damage. Only picked up two kills, but as we all know, it's the damage that matters. Not able to see that T-71 for long enough to get a shot, as he's playing a little bit smarter than the EMX 1390 did earlier, and just uh, drops back down behind that ridge when he gets spotted. So it looks like the attack that the Allies did in the north has been repelled now. That Object 704 and T-28 prototype able to fend off the attackers there. Uh, and apparently that AT-7 has gotten himself stuck in a ravine. Not sure how true that one is. We're going to have to just wait until we get back into some action to see if that is true. So feel like the Allied team's winning at the moment, but it really they've only got one kill on the enemy team. Although if that AT-7 is stuck, that's going to give them a significant advantage. But I think the problem here is their Object 704 Super Pershing and T-32 have camped in the base for the whole game. Now with the Object 704, you can understand that, but the T-32 and Super Pershing definitely shouldn't really have been camping in base there. Takes a hit from somebody there, probably that T-71, considering it just bounced. Although if it hit that turret, it could have been anybody, to be honest. Just going to wait around for the rest of his team to arrive. We're going to speed this one up again until we get back into some action. T-71 gets spotted out on the other side of the map. And the Object 704 and T-28 prototype are both backing each other up in that area there. Allies arrive. The T-32, Super Pershing and Object 704. They're going to link up with the Knaven and hopefully attack from this angle. B-Duck decides to swing himself around and go and attack from the other side of the map. Going to try and flank them while they are focused on... Oh, looks like I've paused that for some reason. Sorry about that, guys. So while they are focusing on the allies from the front, hopefully B-Duck can come around from the side and just get free damage on everybody. Nice shot, able to take out that T-71 as he tries to back off from the guys in the front. Uh, I don't think... Was he spotted? He almost certainly will have been spotted for that. But uh, I didn't see his sixth sense go off, probably because I wasn't looking at the screen just after he took the shot. 
So it looks like the T28 prototype and the Object 704 still on full health here. But uh, he's got full side armor of this T28 prototype and gets a massive hit through the side of him. The T28 still focusing on the front here, exposing all of his sides and all of his rears to B-Duck here. One more. No, gets a low roll on that one. Really should have been able to take him out with a single shot. So a little bit unfortunate there. But it looks like he's well hidden from the rest of his allies. So just one more shot and he's able to take him out no problem whatsoever. And indeed it looks like that AT7 is indeed stuck in the ravine. So this is just going to be 1,114 free damage for B-Duck here. So let's just uh, skip through this because you don't want to sit and watch the AT7 get shot to death in real time. And that just leaves this Object 704 which was last spotted in the base. Not quite on full health on just over 1300 so the... Five of them here should easily be able to flank him and work him down. It would be nice if the allies would uh, leave this kill, the killing blow to B-Duck so he could pick up his Top Gun medal, as I think it's pretty much deserved in this match because he's had an outstanding game with 5,500 points of damage. But then some people see it as survival of the fittest. If you're not able to pick up the... Oh, very nice bouncing that shot from the Object 704. Just a few more seconds on reload. Can he take him out? Nope, the Object 704 decides to suicide because he's an absolute cockhead. <laughs> so denies the Top Gun medal for B-Duck there by just suiciding like an absolute ass clown. But still, not taking anything away from B-Duck there because he had an absolutely stellar game there. Almost 6,000 points of damage and 5 kills. Ammo rack in a T-32 and uh, really helping his team steamroll this 1-2 victory. So absolutely awesome replay from you. Thank you very much for sending that one in. Don't forget guys, if you've got yourself a good replay, please send that into replay at screenreality.com. Link for that is in the description. Just attach the replay file to the email or just send me the link to the replay that's up on whatreplay.com uh, either of those are good if you enjoyed this video leave me a like or favorite stick a comment in the comment section below let me know exactly what you thought about the two games and if you're not already please consider hitting that subscribe button for more content like this in the future i have been maxwell this has been world of tanks and i will catch you guys next time